Hello everybody. I hope all of y'all are having a good day today. It's a Monday morning here in the Philippines and um, it's a hot one. It's very hot today. Uh, yesterday was Lynn and I's uh, day to share the message at the uh, worship center in Malawi. <clears throat> and um, while we were while we were speaking, I started getting some revelations about things, and, and I was sharing some of those revelations with the congregation. And uh, I want to share with you um, what God was revealing to me while I was giving the sermon yesterday. God is so good. Um, part of my our sermon, we were talking about unity, you know, being of one accord in the church. I, I, I've, I've touched on this topic several times here on videos on Facebook and YouTube. And um, <clears throat> I was telling them about how, you know, the praise and worship team, you know, there's a guitar player, bass player, a drummer, the singers, the backup singers, and all that stuff. And everybody has a role to play. Everybody has, has a part to do. And whenever they're all working together for the same purpose, it's beautiful, you know. But if there's one person off, if there's one person that's going a different direction than the rest of them, it's all off. It makes the whole thing sound horrible. And I started using the analogy of a choir. You know, you have the bass, the tenors, the sopranos, the altos, and you have the people doing the solos. You know, everybody has their part to play, and whenever they're all singing in one accord, it's beautiful. You know, the angels are singing. You know, they're of one accord. And I was telling them how now, you know, there's the, the, we are not of one accord. There's over 42,000 denominations of Christian churches today, all based off the Bible, and none of them are singing the same tune. None of them have the same language. So they're, they're not of accord. They're, everybody's fighting you know, over who's right and who's wrong. You got people that sound, speak the language of Baptist, people that speak the language of Lutheran, people that speak the, the language of Church of Christ, people that speak the language of Catholic. And it, 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 God revealed to me, showed me that, you know, there was the Tower of Babel and God confused their languages. They couldn't communicate with each other and they couldn't, they couldn't finish their task. They were trying to build a tower to reach heaven. They were trying to work their way to God. All of this stuff goes back to, with works of your hands and works of the Spirit. God confused their language. It's like everybody was there reading from the Torah, going, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it here. We're going to do it here. They were trying to live by the letter. And then all of a sudden you started having all these factions breaking off like we have today with all these denominationalisms and the people stopped speaking the same language and they couldn't finish what they started which was to reach God be in the presence of God they couldn't do it because their language was confused and so I was telling them you know I, I said nowadays whether you speak Chinese Japanese Russian German English it doesn't matter if you're speaking love, we're all of one accord. We're all speaking the same language. Even though it's different carnal language, we're all speaking the same language because it's all about love. Remember Jesus told him, he said, why can't you understand me? Why can't you understand my language? You can't hear my message. You can't understand my message because they, they, they couldn't spiritually hear what he was saying. Everything's about love. And it's written in the prophets, you know, it said with, with uh, strange lips that, or they'll speak strange new tongues. You know, it says these signs will follow them. They'll, they'll speak strange new tongues, you know, and, and that strange new tongue, that word new there is, is, means something that has never been heard before. It's something, something new. Something they'd never heard before was, was Jesus talking about love, love, love. He was speaking a language that they couldn't understand because their language was considered hate. He was saying, your father is of the devil. And when he speaks, he speaks his native language. You know, he was a murderer from the beginning. 
You know, he was a religious man. He, he's talking about Cain or whatever, but Cain is the carnal man. Cain is the one that's trying to live his life by the letter instead of by the spirit. And he said, you can't understand me. I'm speaking a strange language to you. You're unable to hear it. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I thought that was pretty cool that, that God, you know, all this time I've known that story, the Tower of Babel, but, you know, Unless God opens up something to you, you can't see it. And uh, yesterday in the middle of, of our sermon, God showed me that. And, he, you know, he's like, you know, I confused their language. And, and they couldn't understand each other. They were working with their hands to build something together, trying to reach him. And, and, and God was showing them, you know, your works of your hands ain't going to get you there. He confused their language. They started fighting over what they thought the Bible said. <laughs> you know, and so they couldn't finish it. And that's what's happened today. Most of the world, that none of these churches are, are, are hitting the mark. You know, that, that the, what the definition of sin is, is to miss the mark. And people are missing the mark by thinking that the works of their hands are going to hit the target. And the target has always been the same, to be in the presence of God. And people are missing the target, they're missing the mark, they're sinning by thinking that doing the works of their hands is what makes God happy and is putting them in the presence of God, and it's not. So God has confused the language again. Everybody has got, well, you got to do it the Baptist way or the Church of Christ way or this church's way or that church's way. Everybody's got these paths that they think they have to follow, but the path is within. The kingdom of God is within you. And once you peel back those layers of yourself, your ego, your pride, and all that stuff, you'll get to that one point where you'll realize that love is everything. Love is the only thing that matters. That's when you'll find that treasure that's within you is love. I know it was that way with me on June 14th of 2012. Once I found that treasure, love is a love that, that, that human words cannot do justice, cannot explain properly, but it changes everything. It changed the person that I was. You can ask, there's lots of people out there that remember the old Billy, and uh, they seen what happened. They seen how I was transformed, and it's not by my doing. It was all from God. But I was given this strange new tongue that most people don't understand, and it's the language of love. Love conquers all. Love does no harm. And that, that's the, um, until the world starts and understands and the world starts speaking love again, whether or not they're speaking Chinese, Russian, German, or whatever, until the world starts speaking love in their own language, the world is never going to change. It's only going to get worse. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you guys. The great awakening is coming. There's gonna be a great change come. And the voice of God is gonna be heard everywhere before you know it. Anyway, I love you all. God bless.